James P. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, today is a hell of a day, and uh, not a holiday, but a hell of a day, and the reason why I say it's a hell of a day is because today is my birthday, it is August 1st, 2015, Saturday afternoon, and uh, I say hell of a day because I stopped counting them, like many people. But um, anyway, um, Jeez, I got mine wrong. What? I had mine wrong. I thought it was a year younger. Yeah, don't, don't, don't give away you know? anything. You don't have to give away your age. But as Dr. Mayo says, we got 120 years. So make the best of it. Dr. Roy Wolfer says, uh, I think 150. The human body was designed mm -hmm. to. Uh, mm. Under ideal conditions. I'm going with Dr. Mayo. You know, it's like a dog or a cat. Under ideal conditions, with the optimal, with an optimum nutrition and a good environment, and good and clean, calmer. clean water, and, and 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 a loving home, you could squeeze extra years out of a dog or a cat or any pet. So why not a human under under ideal conditions? It happens. You know, it happens. But then there's a limit. There is a limit. Talking about the Ptolemers? I'm talking about there is a biological limit. The, the, um, well, we the cannot get to 200. We cannot get to 900. Like Adam, etc. Unless you put an artificial uh, cyborg type of heart in you. Your cells won't do it. Well, science will keep you going. I think it would. Be. They won't keep us going. They may keep the rich going, but not us. We, because we, we won't. Do not we, put your faith in science. We can't. When it has to do with money. We can't even afford to have one of our organs, through DNA, stem cell, whatever they use, grown, replicated in a laboratory which exists today. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like if we need a transplant, there is there is there there are laboratories that will uh, grow a replica of an organ that you need where, where your, your body will, will accept it. It won't reject it because it's from your yeah. whatever uh, DNA. And, and, but, but I'm sure it's astronomically priced because I don't the, think... The other day uh, they, they, they sewed two hands on this kid. Two hands on one arm? Oh, a hand on each arm. Hand on each arm. He lost his legs too. But they didn't do anything with the legs. But they microsurgery, eleven hours, they attached his hands and they're doing good. Now there's a specific powder substance that uh, the article is in Europe that would actually <laughs> regenerate a limb on a human. But um, Sometimes they grow it on a different part the United States, of the body. The United States seems to be the last to embrace the newest technology concerning well, medical science. Well, if the big companies can't make a buck on it, then forget about it. Got to make a profit. They got to yeah. patent everything. They got to. They got to exploit every damn thing. Everything is 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 uh, is profit motivated with capitalism. They don't do anything for the sake of mankind, the betterment of, of, of the human race. Everything is done uh, as far as a, making a profit goes. Bottom line. Dollars and cents. Bottom uh, line, baby. Well, I want to start off, well, I didn't start off, but the show with this, but uh, uh, I want to have a moment of silence for the shocking um, uh, news that I heard the uh, uh, the greatly premature, unexpected death of uh, professional wrestling Hall of Famer uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. 
he supposedly died of cardiac arrest at 61 years of age, rather young. I'm going to have a moment of silence for Roddy Piper. And uh, being that the same unexpected, unexpected death took place with uh, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, I would like to have a moment of silence and respect for the both of them. was Dusty Rhodes. Well, it was, I think this was the past month. Yeah? But still. I didn't see anything it's about Dusty, it. It's Dusty Rhodes. <coughs> you know, I mean, it's not some some ham and agar. Well, you know, as a, it's the difference between being fit and healthy. Well. You people, people can be fit, they can be buffed, they can be cut etc but they they need not be healthy you see that that was always my approach when I was doing personal training uh, starting in the uh, early uh, 1990s I think it was 1995 hmm. um, I always try to take a step back look at the overall picture of, of a client uh, um, look at the overall quality of health of the client, uh, um, integrate every aspect of good health, not just how the client looks in the mirror, but how they feel and how is their overall health in general. You know, diet, I always like to start with the client keeping a log for the first week of being under me to write down everything they put in their body because I feel that diet is actually more important than the exercise program and without proper diet you cannot have the raw materials to get results from the fitness program. <laughs> so your lifestyle, your eating habits, uh, is all, many factors. Uh, trying to determine if the person who is overweight has an underactive thyroid which is sort of rare it's a um, hypothyroidism uh, you take you know, when you first when you wake up when you open your eyes you take your body temperature for about a week and uh, if your temperature is lower lower than 98.6 then you need to see an endocrinologist uh, that's how you, you could tell and uh, also determine if a person what kind of what kind of diet a person should go on by giving them uh, pure niacin on an empty stomach and if they get the flush then they should have more protein and less carbohydrates than the average person they should be more ketogenic more Atkins style so anyway, but the, the, it's overall health. I don't want to get into detail. Uh, this is not holistic health talk, but we do talk about health. Now, we have a lot to cover here, so I'll try to make it brief and to the point. Everything collectively that we discuss is part of our new series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Here's the conch. Capitalism in a conch shell. You will see the conch throughout the show, whether you like it or not. <laughs> okay. Um, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. <laughs> now, with the, we're going to do some Chisler's Hall of Shame. A long Chisler's Hall of Shame. I want to induct Napoli Pizza on Main Street hey. Main Street in Lodi, New Jersey. They're not on Main Street, they're in the mini mall. I don't give a fuck where they are, those pencil neck geeks. They the are mall. off. They're not on Main Street. They're on another side street, but they're, they're in, in Burger King they're, Mall. They're in Lodi, Bur uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. Bergen County. But they're Bergen they're King. not the only culprits. Oh well. Charging 
a two dollar delivery charge and not one penny goes to the driver they pocket the money I asked them what is the delivery charge for does the driver get any of it they go no we get it I says but why I says why because they feel like it. shame on you pizzerias you know this goes back to what we were talking about one Wednesday about businesses let's take retail business in America mm -hmm. when they decide on pricing things it doesn't seem like they pick a, uh, a set suggested retail selling price a universal set value for everything it's almost like they they pull numbers out of the air out of a hat and they you know they decide what kind of markup they want to make and this to me is unethical well they they the, the gasoline that is used in, in the delivery yeah is a write-off tax-wise if the car belongs to them right but what they usually do is they get some sucker yeah with a car and they have him make the live deliveries so it doesn't cost them a dime they're not losing anything on that and of course you know the delivering that's a it's a um, it's a cost of doing business but it they don't it doesn't really cost them but it is a cost of doing business I bet they're writing off the gas that of the, the if vehicle it's their car they're all, like the labor it's all they write it all off yes yes, yes. Cost it labor. doesn't cost them a damn thing what it costs them is they're not courteous because delivery should be a courtesy which they offer you well they chose to deliver pizza people did not force them to deliver pizza they chose to do it as, as a courtesy service for their customers and therefore all of it is written off so that extra two bucks that they pocket they pocket it they pocket it and there's no justification for it now it's like that guy what, 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 what was it the, uh, uh, with the the people's tips in the, the restaurant or whatever Mario Battaglia and he's keeping a damn shit he's the uh, when, when uh yeah well Mario Battaglia was was taking his uh, wine servers tips gratuities now other restaurateurs or diners or whatever anyone who pulls the tips of their waiters and waitresses that's a scam because what happens is the good waiters and waitresses are not rewarded in comparison to the bad waiters and waitresses because everybody has to share equal amount but what what's to stop the owner of the restaurant or diner from skimming that money from pocketing some of that money before it's divided amongst the waiters and waitresses he could say oh th these are all the tips for the day doesn't belong, it doesn't belong to them. In other words, the owner takes it, the pool tips. He could pocket some of that without telling the waiters uh -huh. and waitresses. Uh -huh. Now you see how the scam can be done? It doesn't belong to them. It's a legal scam. Okay. Just like um, the internships with schools. Companies hire these uh, senior uh, students before graduation to get college credit or whatever school credit and they get free slave labor and then what happens the next year they get another semester full of senior <laughs> students and they work for free internship another capitalist scam all right moving on interesting I want to induct a company that makes uh, uh, pet supplies for uh, aquariums it's called Lee's capital E E S capital L E E S Lees L E E S uh, the prices went up but the plastic parts that they make are like an eggshell they snap very easily they are so thin and fragile uh, it's I guess it's similar in a way to downsizing packaging you're keeping your prices up you're giving the customer less 
product quality control to or less quality you are you are they're cutting corners on manufacturing their products putting out shoddy fragile merchandise they saw it done with japan they saw it done with china they do it themselves tell us. shame on you chiseless hall of shame lee's aquarium products all right moving along uh i want to say really quick Hello, greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. <coughs> and to all of my uh, Facebook group administrators, greetings, shout out. And I want to thank all of the wonderful people that sent me birthday wishes on my Facebook uh, profile oh, and ready? groups. I, uh, uh, a very big turnout, and I appreciate every one of you. All right, moving along. You want to you want to get more shaves out of your razor blades? Yes. After you use the razor blade, it will be wet. Keep your razor blade in rubbing alcohol and it will immediately evaporate all moisture from the razor blade which will prevent oxidation on the blade edge and you will get many more shaves per razor. Mm. And it works because I do it. Mm. I have proven it. Mm. All right. Oh my gosh! Look at the, you! Look what you let in the house. A prime. Oh. Prey mantis. Hold on. Oh, how cute! It's a young one too. Now, how are you gonna get it out the door? No, no, don't worry about it. Listen. Yeah, but it's. I'm. Very I, have a fragile. I have a degree. I have a degree in bugiology. Good. But uh, it's very fragile. Yeah, I, I know. I have a degree in bugiology. Okay. I know what I'm doing. So bug it out I the love the. Too bad they only have a lifespan of a year. Or otherwise, they take it home. Oh no, he's he's growing. He's he's young. Now, should I take it home? No, take it outside. Come here, little bugger. That no, you can't do that. You gotta make sure. Yeah, keep it now. Throw it out the door. Will you throw it out no, the door? No, I want to door? show the people you No, no, you can't. It's a baby praying mantis. All right, they see it. They seen it. Da, 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 da. Get da, out da, the da, door. Da, oh, yeah. come, on, come on, come on, come on. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, do I, yeah. Do I, have right. a, do I have a critter keeper? No. Come on, will you get it Why out the door? Why are you afraid of a, of a little... I don't want it in the door, for uh, God's sakes. I'm trying to think if I have a... No, you don't. Yes, I do. Toss it out the door. Keep quiet. Damn it. Keep quiet. I'll put it in the mailbox. No! Throw it. Let it fly away for God's sakes, man. Maybe it'll stick around. I don't want it to stick around. All right, well, maybe I want to take it home. I don't care what you have to say if I'm going to take it home. What the hell do I care what you think? Well, you could take it home, but I want it out of here. Well, it's out of here. I should bring how the hell it got in here. I should bring in something much larger and more formidable just to watch you scream in, in, in blood curdling horror. I, I I hate insects. Well you are of all types you're, and shapes. You're bigoted and size. You're prejudice. Okay? You're prejudice. I'm gonna call uh Didn't I'm the call I'm gonna call the Reverend Buggy Sharpton. Didn't you see? <laughs> I would have called. <laughs> somebody posted a video the other day. Oh on crap! Facebook. Never know what's going to happen on the show, really. There was a dead worm. A dead worm. All the ants got together and started pulling this worm to their house. My friend, it doesn't take okay. a colony of ants to pull anything. I've seen one ant carry something this, this many times worm. its body weight. This was a big worm. It took uh, it took hundreds and hundreds of ants. Okay. And they now. all worked together. Woo! Okay. Oh, it was a cute little praying mantis too. It was not. Maybe I'll see it when I when I leave. Yeah, I hope it goes up on your head. I could do that. It's harmless. Good, good, good. Home, I'll take them home on a head. Hey, uh, hey. All right, now. I want to also induct. And this is this really raises my. Me blood pressure. Me higher. The captain. Me hackle. Capital C A P T A N. Captain. 
Auto Repair Center, Sitco Gas Station oh, on Main Street in Lodi, New Jersey. Guess what? After all the years of supplying free air for your tires, they have decided to put in one of those contraptions where you have to pay money for air. You have to put quarters in it. So now there is officially only one gas station left in my area that has free air knock on wood I hope it stays that way forever as long as I'm living in the area but this place is captain they run by I don't know well if they're Indian or or Pakistani I don't know what they are but they're somewhere in that part of the world shame on you you greedy bastards it'll be a cold day in hell before I pay for air I will go to uh, Strauss Auto Center or, or yes. an auto parts store and I will buy one of those contraptions that Billy Morrow has where you plug it into your cigarette lighter and you fill up your you own tires. That. I rather spend the money on that. Didn't I give you one of those? I, I, I used it and then I also eventually it, it fell apart. What? And, it, and then because they come in different models. There's cheap models and there's the better ones. Well, Billy Morrow got the better one. It has a gauge, has gauges on it that show you the tire pressure as you're pumping it. You don't need to measure it. Everything comes in, you know, depending on what you want to spend. Believe me, the, the, the bottom line ones do not last long. Sometimes well, who the hell knew there was a difference? Some some things in some things uh you get what you pay for. Not all the time. Sometimes you get better or just as good at a bargain. You gotta be an educated consumer. I know I sound like the Cy Sims commercial, but that'll be a cold day in hell before I pay for air. Hess is the other one, right? pay for the air coming out of my ass Free when air. I fart. No, no more, brother. Why oh, they the gotta hash? pay. Yes, 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 oh yes. My God. Every friggin' one of them, you gotta pay. Whether it be Shell, whether it be uh, uh, Luke Oil, uh, 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 Sunoco, whatever. I don't know. I don't keep track of these damn companies. This was a... Um, no, it was it's not a Sitco station. I, I my apologies. The Captain uh, uh, repair auto repair is a uh, Delta. You know, one of the cheapo gases. Delta, not Sitco. My mistake. Okay. I noticed a trend in this, Doctor Bill, uh, uh, when the weather gets hot, and it's uh, it's a crime. A toddler. About two-year-old little girl was left in the car for 30 minutes with the windows cracked yesterday at Costco in Hackensack, New Jersey, and uh, someone called the police, and uh, the police officer took a temperature reading inside the car, which was 108 degrees Fahrenheit, and the mother was appropriately arrested, but this is not a rarity. Mm -hmm. This happens all over the country where animals, you know, pets, dogs, mostly dogs, and children, young children, are left in the hot vehicle with the windows cracked, which, like the cracked window, is going to make a difference during a heat wave. And this appears so much on the, the newses, and yet it keeps happening. The news. The news is. News is? Meaning more than one news station. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know. Whatever you want. All right. No hey, problem. you can make up your own goddamn words. I can make <laughs> up mine. All right. All right. I coined the term okay. news is. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Okay. I'm Thank you. It. But anyway, uh, uh, it's a crime, and it should be. You are absolutely brain cell deficient and despicable human beings. Anyone who leaves a pet or a young child in the car like that. It is so you, irresponsible. You know what the mother's excuse was? What? She was sleeping, so I didn't want to disturb her. 
Oh, is that like if somebody was sleeping and uh, you don't uh, you don't want to go in the room to shut the 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 gas jet off because you're afraid the noise might wake up the person. So let's leave the gas jet going. Speaking of sleep. Yeah, right. I didn't get much this morning because these guys started at eight o'clock. This uh, construction here. And knowing me and you, we're both yeah. nocturnal creatures. So I didn't get much sleep this All morning. All right. Now uh, we're down to almost the last one. This will be quick. This will be a Chisler's Hall of Shame. I want to induct Progresso Soups. Yay! Progresso Soups. Canned what, soups. What kind is that? This is Progresso Light Beef Pot Roast. Oh, <laughs> sounds good. You know why Progresso Light is Progresso Light? Not because it's Back. special, but because it's mostly liquid. There's hardly any <laughs> beef or vegetables in the can. It's a no-brainer. Of it's, course it's, it's light. It's light on food. It's <laughs> high on liquid and light on food. There you go. Oh my God. Good old capitalism and, and marketing and and fraud and advertisement and marketing. Yeah, hey, I eat minestrone with Progresso. In the United States. You know what soups are loaded, chock full of actual ingredients? Uh. I mean, when they when I say chunky, I mean more chunky than Campbell's chunky. Uh -huh. Stu supermarket by the name of Aldi's. It's a German company out of Illinois. Their soups, their equivalent soups, are loaded. They're in a can. They're in a can. They Do got they the flip top. Bacon? Huh? Do they have Campbell's bean with bacon? Fuck Campbell's. No, I want bean with the, bacon. They got the all the all different kinds of all these soups. And they're loaded with food, with actual food. They got all different kinds, even New England clam chowder. I don't like it. Well, you don't like the white sauce. I don't want anything white. See, no this pressure, guy, no, no, when nothing. he doesn't like something, that's right. He'll really emphasize that he hates it or they doesn't like it, it but it. he'll say it in a forceful way, like they should outlaw it. No. I mean, there are people who like New England clam chowder. Yeah, but not one, I, I'm not one of them. You're not one of them. Right. But you'll, you'll say it like you're, you want to be a dictator and take it off the market. It's no, it has a, nothing to do with that. Tongue. Anyway, shame on you, Progresso. You know, play on words, light, big deal. Now for the last part, which is an experience that the Reverend Dr. Bill had with a company called the vitamin shop inductee the last inductee into this week's chisler's hall of shame dr bill ordered something very important nutritional supplement that he uses all the time mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. called twin lad twin lab twin lab super c powder mix it's a it's a, a high quality very high quality with bioflavonoids vitamin c powder. Eight ounce bottle. Eight ounce bottle, glass bottle that mixes in whatever beverage. And uh, he ordered it and when he ordered it, they it said that it was in stock. I mean it was there. Yeah, the, well, the, no, it the, was, the code number was there. You made you you ordered the amount order, of bottles yes, and tell the people what happened. Well a couple of days uh, later I get an email says uh, they're gonna send my my resveratrol, which I ordered at the same time, but the uh, Twin Labs were back ordered. Yeah. Well, that was July the 1st, I believe I made the order, then two days later I got the email. So, I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until like maybe July 29th. Right. And then I sent them an email and asked, where's my back order? Where's my back order? I get an email. We canceled it. The, uh, it has been discontinued. Well, that's oh, nobody all. told me. If I wouldn't have sent the damn email, I would have never known. Holy I'm waiting shit. around for my order. And, and in total, how long did you wait before you found out it was discontinued? Almost a month. From the time the, the, the order, the transaction was made. July 1 to the 29th. Well, there's a big difference in something being on back order and something being discontinued. That's correct. I wish they would have told you sooner. You then, were... I found out 
that it was five dollars cheaper some other workplace. He, he found it through another company and it was five dollars cheaper than the vitamin shop and he could have placed the order a month ago with the other company if the irresponsible uh, 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 vitamin shop would have had competent employees not numbskulls working for them to actually post on their website that the product is now discontinued I don't know why they discontinued such a fantastic yeah. product it really is a superior vitamin C uh, supplement and the only reason I can think of is that the vitamin shop whom I worked for many years ago they want to shrink the uh, the uh, the the, uh, the name brand or brand name whatever is the correct term they want to shrink the inventory of the brand name products so they can push their own private label vitamin shop products because they make more money on them so it's not for the good of the customer like they always brag about in their advertisements how they care so much for their customers it's done for out of greed and profit because they don't care what quality su uh, nutritional supplement you get and then you sent me an email yeah where it was a dollar cheaper than what I paid well, this time around. Well, that but that Google shopping search had Vitacost. It had Lucky Vitamins on yes, there. Yes, yes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Vitacost. It was the one I bought it from. That was up there. Well, so that wasn't for. I didn't buy it for fifteen dollars. No, no, but it was. It was one at the top. Okay, but I don't know which one sells it for fifteen dollars. I didn't know that. I'd have I to think, check I that think, out. I guess. I think there was one other company, I think Vitacost might have been second as far as price goes. Yeah, because I paid 15 and change. Because because it's it's a it's like a competition between Vitacost and LuckyVitamins.com right, well, as far as who has the best price. And maybe I better check it lucky. Yeah, I my, my, my sister ordered from Lucky before. It depends. It depends on who's running the sale. Sometimes it's buy one get one free or uh, whatever, whatever they want to do, you know, like the uh, the fantastic vitamin B12 sublingual vitamin B12 from Botanical Choice. They happened to be on sale. Plus, she had a coupon. My sister's good at getting these online coupons. Well, you know? as long as she can print them out, fine. Yeah. You know, but well, I'm not I mean, waste you know, my ink on printing well, out you know, coupons print it out because she orders online so she there's probably a code or I think, it could be I a think code, there's yeah. a coupon code that yeah. you type into you know your order but anyway anyway uh, uh, anything can be found online and found cheaper you gotta gotta love high technology gotta love it and uh, all the seeds you know of various plants all the seeds that I ordered online for like dirt cheap like a, a couple bucks or so with free shipping from China they all sprouted seeds dirt cheap they yeah no pun intended <laughs> dirt cheap pun intended pun intended <laughs> those are the levity bells I got a I gotta put some kind of handle on it so I know where the handle is. Um, well, that wraps it up. Except I want to say one thing before I show you my siphon, because you're wondering what I'm waving around here. Chris Christie <laughs> made a statement, and he says, "State of Colorado, smoke up." your marijuana now well, while you have a chance because if I'm elected president I am going to send the narcs the narc squad down to Colorado and I'm going to use federal funds to do it oh he's got federal funds to spend on stupid right-wing cockamamie morality crimes or whatever 
you know, frivolous bullshit like marijuana possession or marijuana smoking. He's got federal funds for that, but Chris Christie does not have federal funds to help the veterans and the poor in this country. What about the pensioners in New Jersey? That he stole from, right? That's correct. That's correct. But, uh, but he's all gun-ho about getting those pot smokers. Well, it sounds like just a lot of talk because there'd have to be a law, you know, that the Congress would have to make. Not, not that America will embrace... America yeah. doesn't have arms long enough to embrace him. But not that America would embrace Chris Christie and put him in the White House anyway, but this is the way Republicans... Conservatives think they got money to go after prostitution and marijuana, pornography, and pornography, and 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 and, and stopping gays from getting married, and stopping gays from being gay, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and all this crap that's none of their damn business. All this frivolous stuff and and so-called morality uh, uh, issues. They got money for that. They don't have money to actually help people. Like Pope Francis says, you know what prayer is about? You pray for the poor, the hungry, and then you and then you feed them. That's how that's how it's supposed to work. You give them your two coats. You don't just And if you have meat, you invite them to your table. You don't just do what Republicans do and say, Oh, I'll pray for you. you and go. then do nothing. No. No action. That's easy, baby. Well they say, you know, it's the old story, hey, they're saved by faith. Not by works. It's both faith and works, my friend. Yeah, you hear that, you uh, evangelical, uh, holy roller, born again people that say you're covered. Uh, Paul's mm -hmm. letters say you're we're, we're living under grace and you're covered by yeah. the blood and you don't have to worry about the Ten Commandments the law anymore. was nailed to the cross. Yes, and they insist on it too. Well, of course. Why? They don't want to believe that you know uh, live by the. Ten Commandments, they just want to put it in a court house. Because a lot That's of all? these people, I studied, a lot of these people who believe in this type of Christianity, they're not what you would call nice people. They, they're they users, a lot of them are liars, a lot of them are just users. They're and hypocrites. I know one person who is a chiseler, the cheapest bastard you'll ever meet in your life, and a user that is a born-again person who insists that the law, the law is no more. We're not living under the law anymore. The law was nailed to the cross. God forbid. Should we not be under the law? Yeah. That's what Paul said. Anyway, forget about trickle-down economics. It never happened. It never will happen. It was a, a, Re a Ronald Reagan lie. What we have is sight. No! Who, who started the crap? Trickle down's been going for a long time. All right, it's a Republican fantasy. Reagan was supply side. All right, so so it's a Republican fantasy. Of course. So, all right. Of course. Maybe starting, who knows? Maybe from the J. Industrial Revolution, probably. J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, those days. Those days. What we have is siphon up to the top twenty percent. The devil's economics. That's the siphon. All right. Now let us sink our teeth into these readings. So yeah, I went through the beginnings in a, in a timely fashion. Maybe because it's my birthday, I got more a little more energy. Finally, the Republican Party leadership and numerous GOP presidential candidates feel obligated to respond to the outrageous comments of Donald Trump. Well, he's remember. When you're that rich, you're eccentric. You're not crazy. Someone put a you're post eccentric. video up there last night of Donald Trump on the Oprah Winfrey show many moons ago. I think back in 2000, before G.W. Bush was, was his hair orangey back selected. then. No, his his hair was a, a brownish color, a regular color. He was. Uh, lean and uh, whatever. He wasn't all bloaty in the face. And he was he was saying, you know, he was talking about the bad stuff that, you know, the, the other countries, what, what we let them do to us in our trade 
executive. What about what the United States does to them? Well, yeah, but the, we, 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 we let them put their products over here, and they don't let us oh, put our products gotcha. over there. Gotcha. I, I understand. So that's been going on for a long the time. The whole thing about outsourcing and all that yeah. stuff. But she asked him if he would run for president, and he said no back then, and then maybe. So. Well, now he's got, I guess he's... Maybe he's bored, he's got more time on his hands nowadays. Yeah. You know, he's a multi-billionaire, it's like, maybe he ran out of uh, pet projects. Yeah. You know, uh... And things to put his face on and into. See, Donald... Because his ego is massive. Donald Trump, okay. I believe, was going to build the tallest building in the world in New York City, but the mayor at the time, uh giving him a grief about it. I don't know which mayor it was, but, uh, you know, um, I don't know, somebody was bitching about the shadow mm -hmm. that it would cast. I don't know, some ah. stupid crap. Hey, you wish you got shade in New York. The, the more shade, the better. Anyway, the anyway. outrageous comments Donald Trump is making about John McCain's military service and his status as a true American war hero. You are not a war hero if you're a POW. That just means you're captured. Where was this group for the past month as Trump made one outrageous comment after another? I guess he finally crossed the line for these political leaders. Their responses to Trump's immigration remarks apparently were tempered by their concern about offending the base of the party. But Trump's statement about McCain is not being a, a war hero finally struck a nerve. Where was this group when John Kerry was running for president? And he was the target of the swift boat ads attacking his war service by segments of the same group that currently are supporting Trump. Where was the similar outrage when Trump was an outspoken supporter of the birther movement about President Obama's birth certificate? Remember that many of these political figures felt it necessary during the 2012 presidential campaign to visit Trump and kiss his ring for his political support much like Lindsey Graham did. Well, they all went to Trump before. Donations for their packs. Oh yeah, they all have their hands out. They, were, they all have a price, uh, uh, including the, uh, the, the vile, despicable, sellout Democrats talking about the uh, moderate to conservative Democrats that shouldn't even be Democrats. U.S. Senator John McCain is to be honored for the suffering he endured in captivity. Well, he, yeah, but... But he would be the last to claim he is a hero. A hero? In 1953, when American prisoners of war were released by North Korea, they were welcomed home, but not as heroes. Indeed, some 20 soldiers defected to China. Others acted differently. Some felt guilt for surrendering. Some were numb to their existence. Some acted courageously and others cowardly. Who was a hero and who was not? We can't judge a soldier's conduct under a cloud of not knowing the facts. Certainly McCain was heroic to us, but only he knows. You know, uh, whether, deciding whether or not 
uh, John McCain was a hero. Uh, um, uh, Being overly preoccupied with uh, gay marriage and, uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on. These are all huge media distractions to me to keep the public's focus off of what's really important, which is what those corrupt scumbags in Washington, along with their corporate top 1% bed buddies are doing. But the most important thing concerning... Taking focus off of that. The most important thing concerning this McCain brouhaha is that he does nothing for the veterans. His record, his voting record, is against them every time. Right. That's like... A, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a preposterous... Hippocratic, uh, 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 hypocritical uh, concept of uh, people like John McCain or G.W. Bush speaking in front of veterans and getting paid for it. Getting paid for it. You, you, these are these are anti-veteran people, not pro-veteran people. Of course, of course. I mean, when I say paid for it, I wouldn't give them one red cent, but G.W. Bush. What the like hell a, can he say? A hundred thousand dollars for speak, speaking in front of veterans. Man has no brains. What is he going to say? What are we going to learn from him in, in a lecture? Yeah. I, I still say that that new sleazy actor that, that plays Colonel Sanders in the KFC commercial, he laughs like G.W. Bush. He's got that <laughs> <laughs> like that sinister like snicker. <laughs> He's not a war hero. He's not. He's a war hero because he was captured. He's I like people that weren't captured, said Donald Trump. He's Republican, too. That, 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 I'm sure Republicans want him to be a war hero. To which I reply, Mr. Trump, have you no sense of decency? He's only being honest like Donald Trump does you know I, I wasn't he interviewed uh, by Bill O'Reilly recently wasn't he on a, I don't a, know. A, 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 the Fox News he could really put Bill O'Reilly down boy believe me Bill O'Reilly is, is is an old numbskull the fart an, and he's a he's a numbskull he's a, he's a fucking idiot all of them are the the conservative coven of witches the blonde bombshells of Fox News and even the brunettes. You know what is disturbing, don't you? What? A couple more days, I have to actually watch Fox News. What's going to happen? The debates. On Fox? The first debate is on Fox. Let me guess. With Megyn Kelly. The clown bus? Ten of them from the clown bus are going to stop at the debate. Holy shit. It's the other seven have been thrown away. Do you realize... What and guess where Mr. Christie is? Where he is? I hope he's not on the end of the bench because he's going to teeter. To, he's going to lift them up. Well, as far as I've seen in the last polls, he is not amongst the first ten. I guess. What, what is it based on the polls? Popularity. It's based on the size of the stage or something. <laughs> you can't have seventeen people up there. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Could you imagine nobody would get a word in edgewise? Everyone will be interrupting each other. How do you control 17 candidates? Yeah, well, there's your problem. Well, all I can but say... But, is that fair? Is that fair? No, not if you have 17 candidates. See? Well, Fox is conservative. Since when are they fair? Well, they're all conservatives. Yeah, but you see how they're at each other's throats now. Yeah. Which is kind of ironic, and it's like comical, you know? Well, what comical I'm saying maybe, is, yeah. after this debate, I'm sure comedians like Jon Stewart are going to have a field day. Oh, indeed. Indeed. A field day. And if Trump keeps up in the polls for the next few days, he's going to own the place. Ain't nobody else going to get by him. On that debate, he's going to own the joint. 
literally they cannot get by him. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A lot of people are extremely upset and they want to boycott MSNBC. Shame on you. As well they should. Shame on you, MSNBC. Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee. Another inductee. You, you disgust me. You are not the, prog the progressive network I thought you was. One of the best shows on there. Ed Schultz. He was like... Bye-bye. Uh, he was like the king of MSNBC. Him and Rachel, Rachel Maddow, right? Well, actually, Chris uh, Matthews is probably the king. But he's got some defects. You see, I don't like... Uh, see, the thing about... I don't know. As soon as a progressive, whether they be Rachel Maddow or a man, doesn't matter. As soon as they try to be courteous and, 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 and diplomatic towards the, the demonic Republicans, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't like them immediately, because you have to be able to earn respect, and Republicans yeah, haven't done a damn thing to earn it. The problem probably with Schultz and MSNBC was Schultz is a union man. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, not for the corporate autocracy. You know what? No likey. Screw the rich. No likey. You're rich. Hey, let's listen. If the rich, even if the rich had the original 91 or 90 percent tax rate, they will still be living high on the hog. But how will the middle class and the poor be living? The point of the income tax, when it was made, and into law was not to tax the middle class and the poor, yeah. only those with the money. All of a sudden, after a few years, and the rich got their grubby little hands into the government, all of a sudden, the middle class and the poor share in these taxes. Income tax. Well, eventually they got the burden. Yeah, as it is today. When yes. the middle class and the poor are paying most of the taxes, that's a tax burden. When the rich are paying most of the taxes, that's not a burden. They might say it is, but it's not. Political discourse in America has descended to yet another low. Given this despicable spitballing of one John McCain, a 1958 graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. He has this phony grimace on his face all the time. He, he had the cheeks puffed out like a hamster. Like a hamster's cheeks yeah. puffed out. He's like a, he's like a very pale jack-o'-lantern. Whose father and grandfather were both four-star admirals. Yeah, well, I know Jeb Bush is a four-star asshole. But for calling the poor moochers. <laughs> yeah. McCain was a naval aviator who volunteered for combat assignments, flying 23 missions, and who endured unimaginable physical and emotional suffering during five and a half years. Two in solitary confinement. In, in a war that uh was not won by the United States in a war that wasn't nearly as important as World War II. I don't think anybody can tell you why the war began. And what would be, I don't know. And what would be so bad if uh, South Vietnam did join North Vietnam and become communist? Uh, what would be so terrible about that? We it's prob it, 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 in third world countries, it's actually, well, it's often an improvement for the poor. We do business with Red China. It's like, like, like they would have saved... Last time I looked, they were communists. They would have saved the 50,000 lives or, or that were lost in, in Vietnam in the war. They would have mm. saved it. So what? You know, yeah, th this goes back to using words like socialism, 
communism, you know. Uh, yeah, Chris Matthews, uh, I believe it was yesterday, would try to pin uh, some uh, uh, woman down, a Republican, I believe, uh, asking what the difference was between a progressive and a socialist. Was this uh, Titan Tits Tantaros? No. Of Fox News? Some, some, some Republican strategist. Oh. You know? I don't know what he was looking for. You know, no, but um, you know what? What? What they're really attacking is totalitarianism, but and confusing it with socialism. But they socialism. were throwing totalitarianism, like Reagan did it. I, I heard him throwing totalitarianism in with communism and mm -hmm, socialism. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're confusing all the political definitions. He was decorated with the Silver and Bronze Stars and ended his career designated disabled, retiring as a captain. Hey, wait a minute. If he can brush his teeth, he's not disabled. Yeah, how come, um, how come uh, 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 rich conservatives, uh, they could have a, a hangnail on their finger yeah. and, and they could be disabled. Or how about the little uh, 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 abscess on his ass, like Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, they could be disabled. You know? But if you're poor Keep or middle class, oh, you have, to ha you have to be practically in the grave. Perhaps for McCain, the only fate worse than the memory of the Hanoi Hilton would be a weekend stay in a Trump hotel. Someone was mentioning they should bring back the Whig party, you know, when they all wore those white Sorry, powder. but the Whigs preceded the Republicans. You know, all those white powdery wigs? So my comment... Well, that wasn't from the Whig party. No, that was just uh, that was a... Uh, that was an 18th century style. Yeah. Right, well my... It's my, still done over in England today. The Parliament. Yeah. But my comical reply was they should they should do it now with Donald Trump wigs. So I, I found the actual company that makes is actually making Donald Trump wigs, and I po posted it underneath there. I mean the Republicans, that would be so fucking funny. Man. I'm sure if he holds out till October, he will sell those wigs for Halloween. Oh, without a doubt. Absolutely. If he holds out. The, you will see Donald Trump masks and Donald Trump wigs and, oh, without a doubt, uh, maybe bobbleheads for the car. Donald Trump bob, wouldn't that be funny? Uh -huh. I'm, I hate uh, uh, conservatives, but I would get one just to laugh at it. Uh -huh. but, hey, a Chris Christie bobble belly for the car. Bobble belly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, I wonder how the poor little prey mantis is doing out there. Uh, anyway. I hope he's gone. Dad. Dad. How the fuck did he get in? Came in with you. Uh, You're the got, only one opened the dang door. He's got good taste. All right, listen. We're going to take a break. It's time for lunch. And yeah, we, starving. we will join uh, with uh, the uh, How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Quotes. Please pause and read and learn. Followed by our commercial voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrill III, with promo. Yeah. And then we will. Buy be... and read and learn that, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then we, we will be back with the balance of our. Shoe, a really big shoe. Our Helliday show. My birthday, Helliday. Which means I'm a year older, therefore. I'm not counting anymore, so it's a hell of a day.
we tomorrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo. I yeah. just want to uh, say uh, congratulations. Uh, as of recently, all fast food restaurant employees in New York City will be starting uh, with $15 an hour. Ta da! Yay. Congratulations, fast food employees of New York City. I'm sure uh, uh, progressive uh, Democrat uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio uh, was involved in something that nice. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a big start for, for a big city like New York to have fast food employees starting with $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. Including McDonald's, the infamous McDonald's. Mm. Start of something big. I also want to uh, mm. congratulate a, f a great employee owned company uh, starting to give a Walmart a run for their money, Winco. Shout out, salute to Winco, an employee owned company. Uh, I also want to bash you despicable sellout blue dog demon crap piece of shit Chris Matthews MSNBC's Chris Matthews for trivializing Bernie Sanders and criticizing and putting him down for being a socialist a democratic socialist which proves Chris Matthews that you are a corporate whore just like the rest of them I swear, I, 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 I would wring your neck like a turkey. Right. And it ain't even Thanksgiving. No. Should be, should be power bombed through a table. Chris Matthews. Okay, last but not least, I couldn't believe when, when we were off the air having lunch. Former President Bill Clinton is receiving for his pension a whopping $450,000 of taxpayers' money? Does a rich person need a pension of $450,000? That's insane. And he made $100 million last year. And that's not counting the money he makes speaking, right? Yeah. Public speaking. Yeah. Talk about uh, wasting taxpayers' money. Uh. The, these are all the corporatists, they all seem to have the elitist mentality, except, except some are better at lying than others. Some are honest about their greed and selfishness, like Republicans. And others are very good actors, like many of the Democrats. But whatever they do, they take care of their own. Right, like Hillary okay. Clinton. Of course she's sounding more progressive now. She's and running. She has for, to. She has to. She's got Bernie Sanders breathing down yeah. her neck. She's running for president in 2016, so she has to. 
uh, uh, be all nice and 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 fuzzy and cuddly and uh, war, warm up to the, to the little people. Veer a little to the left. Yeah, but okay. it means nothing once you get elected. No. No. Anyway, let us resume. Continuing. Continuing. With the Trump factor. The liberal media are doing to Donald Trump what they did to Sarah Palin. Making fun of them instead of concentrating on the issues or their accomplishments. They really should listen to the man because he does make some good sense. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Only and him. Only him. President Obama and the U.S. Senator Harry Reid have said that the southern border is secure. It is? Yet thousands of children crossed over it last summer. Both parties have ignored this problem for years. What about the drug trafficking? Both parties are guilty of increasing our federal debt to in excess of 18 trillion dollars. Our elected officials are mainly lawyers and are clueless about running a business. And their record proves it. Nothing of value to the people gets done in Washington because the politicians are beholden to the special interests who have contributed to, the, to their campaigns for obvious reasons. Quid pro quo. The story said that some of Trump's businesses had lost money. That happens. But overall, he is worth $10 billion. And that makes him a winner, not a loser. As for me, he is the only hope to turn this country around. To, to Donald Trump, Donald Trump is a winner because yeah, he's worth ten billion dollars. What does he care if he wins, he loses? <laughs> and of course, the political elites don't want him to get elected for obvious reasons. Now we finally have a candidate who is actually qualified to run the country as a business and not as a vote-buying scheme or a circus. In actuality, your government is not a business. Okay. That said, we see if he can run the country better. If we relied on the fact that when rich people get in there, they're going to do the right thing, it has never happened. It has never happened. Donald Trump has the liberal news media against him. He also has the conservative media against him, as well as the Republican Party establishment. The only people who aren't against him are the voters. Do they still matter? Let me rephrase that. Do they still matter when their votes go against their political and media masters? Well, when it comes to voting, what we need, number one, is, is a fair system again where you got one person, one vote, no more gerrymandering, you know, and no more voter uh, 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 suppression, especially uh, uh, minorities. Everybody, no one should have to pay a fee to uh, register to vote if they are if they are American citizens. It is it is a, a despicable a scam to keep the poor out of the polls and minorities out of the polls. It should be fair across the board. And the most important thing of all is everyone should uh, 
get off their lazy asses and vote at every major election. Otherwise, do not complain. Don't complain in person and do not complain online if you do not vote. I'm not interested in what you have to say. Zimbabwean police said uh, Cecil Tuesday they are searching for an American dentist who allegedly shot a well-known protected lion known as Cecil with a crossbow in a killing that has outraged conservationists and others. By the way, as an aside, Cecil's brother is now taking care of the cubs. You mean a, a male lion is actually caring for cubs? That's rare. Usually the males just have sex with the, the lioness and they don't wanna they don't wanna know from from the cubs, you know what I mean? They, in other words, when the lioness brings back the, the, the prey, the food, the male lion eats first, and he'll he'll kill the cubs if he if he if he gets in they get in his way. But this is here's a male lion that's taking care of cubs. How about that? Authorities on Tuesday said two Zimbabwean men will appear in court for allegedly helping lure the lion outside of his protected area to kill him. Coward. The American faces poaching charges. The American allegedly paid $50,000 to hunt the lion. Zimbabwean conservationists said, though the hunter and his local partners maintained they didn't know that the lion they killed was protected, Walter James Palmer was identified on Tuesday by both the Zimbabwe Conservation Task Force and the Safari Operators Association of Zimbabwe as the American Hunter, a name that the police then confirmed. We arrested two people and now we are looking for Mr. Palmer. Emmanuel Fundira, president of the Safari Operators Association of Zimbabwe, said at a news conference that Palmer is from Minnesota and his current whereabouts were unknown. Palmer issued a statement saying he was unaware that the lion was so well known and part of a study. I had no idea that the lion I took was a known local favorite uh -huh. who was collared and part of a study until the end of the hunt, he said, maintaining that to his knowledge everything about the hunt had been legal. Well, why legal. did they have to lure him? If it was all illegal, I thought legal is when you go out in the in the wild in the in a non uh, conservation area, out in the plains, Serengeti plains, let's say, or whatever, and you hunt game out there. Not in a, in a in a, a conservation area. Well, they were outside the conservation area. The oh, but they lured, in, and well, then they lured him why out. Why did they need? Why did they need to lure Cecil? Because out? they knew he was in a protected area. But <laughs> but aren't there other lions in Africa that they could hunt? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Attempts to reach Mr. Palmer age 55, that his two listed homo numbers and his office were unsuccessful. Palmer, an avid hunter, pleaded guilty in 2008 to making false statements 
to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh -huh. about a black bear he fatally shot in western Wisconsin outside of the authorized hunting zone. It continues. He has a pattern. Yeah. It is history. Exactly. The two arrested Zimbabwean men, a professional hunter and a farm owner, face poaching charges. Killing the lion was illegal because the farm owner did not have a hunting permit. The lion was skinned and beheaded. The hunters tried to destroy the lion's collar, fitted with a tracking device, but failed. It's like stealing somebody's dog that has a collar and ID tag. If convicted, the men face up to 15 years in prison. The lion is believed to have been killed on July the 1st in western Zimbabwe's wildlife-rich Hawaiian region. And I, I will assure you, they will do hard time in Zimbabwe. Right? It's not going to be uh, uh, an American prison. His carcass was discovered days later by trackers. The Zimbabwe Conservation Task Force said that an American paid the $50,000 for the hunt. During a nighttime hunt, the men tied a dead animal to their car to lure the lion out of a national park. The American is believed to have shot him with a crossbow, injuring the animal. Crossbows are very powerful. They, they fire what they call a bolt instead of an arrow. They're very powerful. The wounded animal was found 40 hours later and shot dead with a gun. Oh. Gee. The saddest part of all is that now that Cecil is dead, the next lion in the hierarchy, Jericho, will most likely kill all of Cecil's cubs. You see what I mean? You, you can't. I heard his brother was taking care of him. No, male lions are all for themselves. They're. <laughs> Yeah, but Jericho is probably from, you know, another, he's a hierarchy in another, not in that pride. They just want to, they just want to get so their rocks off, in. the male lions. They, they, there's no maternal instinct, especially in a male lion. Much, much worse than uh, the male males of other species of animals. They, they the Zimbabwean hunter accused in the case claimed that Cecil was not specifically targeted and the group only learning after the fact that they had killed a well-known lion. Cecil, recognizable by his black mane, was being studied by an Oxford University research program. Tourists regularly spotted his characteristic mane in the park over the last 13 years. Well, I'm not going to believe anything the stupid hunter says. He's already lied in one court case. You know, yeah, he's got a history of lying, yeah, so... And who knows how many other times, you know, he's done bad and maybe not even got caught. Now after Cecil, we'll change the pace a little bit. Do a little psychological. Oh, on a lighter note? Lighter note, yes. Fifteen years ago, I met a woman in an online chat room. We hit it off immediately, found a strong connection, and enjoyed a long and happy online relationship 
despite living in different countries. Eventually, as the years went by, we lost touch. Three years ago, I found her again via a chat app. Yeah. And we picked up right where we left off. We had both matured and our family life and situations had changed dramatically. We were both separated. We talked at a deeper level than before. With each passing day feeling a deeper sense of love, I guess. We used video chat to finally see each other. Actually, that's... Aside from photos. That's a... Uh, that's another part of high technology that I think is fantastic uh, for singles. Uh, it, 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 it eliminates uh, the blind date or uh, it, it, it helps you determine whether or not you want to... Continue. To continue a relationship. Well, not, not a relationship. But it, well, it makes you decide whether or not you should meet the person at all. Take it to a deeper level. To a deeper level. Now, well, uh, meeting somebody casually for coffee or whatever just to meet them face to face is not a deep level. It's just the, the video chat like Skype and others that do video. Uh, eliminates, it verifies the two people. It, it, ver it verifies uh, 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 the fact that they might be using uh, old photos, blurry photos, photos a, of it's them. It's a weeding out procedure. You know how many, uh, I gotta be blunt with you, you know how many undesirable looking females use photos where, where they're far away mm. and you have to get a magnifying glass just to see their face? Or they're blurry, or you just get the head right, right below the chin, which means they're all, they're fat. When they when you don't see anything below the chin, so by doing video chat, it it, it saves wasted time and money on meeting them. It, it's it's great, and you could really get to know someone quite well on a personal level by talking to them on video. You just can't, because the, webcam, the webcams now are very high quality and you get to see them as they are. That's all I want to say. We were like giddy teenagers. Oh, brother. Despite the inability to meet, we professed our feelings for each other. The giddy teenagers, when they were going, hee 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 hee. I changed jobs a year ago and now have the ability to visit her. How far did they live apart? We made plans to meet, but a few weeks before I was due to arrive, she pulled the plug. Uh-oh, what if something happened? Something went wrong on a video? By this stage, we were talking multiple times a day and this game is a massive shock to me. Was she uh, involved with another man as she was chatting with him, perhaps? She said she didn't want to mess this up. Very strange that she did this. In my mind, I have two options. Number one, I abide by her wishes and remain as we are, chat buddies. Never push to meet her. And realize that although she might actually be the one, I should respect her demands. This wimp, this pencil neck geek, did not say why she pulled the plug. She did he, so. She said she didn't want to mess this up. By meeting, she wanted to continue. Well, who that, well, well, what kind of what kind of wussy is this guy? He's willing to just have a platonic relationship with this woman. Well, she is. Just play. Screw that, platonic. Screw she that. Is. Fuck the both of them. He says he's got two options now. This is the second option. Two, uh, two options. Uh, 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 end it completely or, or, or whack off while, while he's talking Buy to Buy a ticket to see her. Call her when I am actually in her hometown. Ask to see her. Hopefully she relents and realizes that sometimes life is full of risks. And sometimes these risks are worth taking. 
hey buddy, if you are ultimately happy. Hey buddy, at least you have the technology of a, of a, of a, a video chat. In the past, people didn't have that. They just had the photographs and a telephone conversation. That's all they had. I do not think there is anyone else on the scene. So this comes down to what I want versus what she wants. This guy is a candidate for my shillelagh. Or maybe there is something I am not seeing. Being a man, this is a possibility. Row a spine, you pencil neck geek, you. Row a spine. Amy Dickinson's answer. She's going to be nice to him, much. There is a middle ground between giving up and showing up. You choose a date to visit. Tell her of the date. Visit on that date. Explaining your well-supported desire to go for it. And telling her where you are staying. Don't show up unannounced, but do show up. If she refuses to see you again, then you should face the fact that this dangling, jangling, online relationship doesn't seem like the best thing for you. Listen. And so you must be prepared to step out of it. You have to, um, before going through the trouble and expense of traveling to meet anyone, you must not have any red flags before you. It, it must be, uh, you know, good to go situation. If, if, if you happen to be living far from each other. Now, if you happen to be in the same region, no problem. You know, you have video calls. You meet her, you're not that far away, you know, but... There are so many reasons she might not want to see you. She's fucked up in the head, so that's one That reason. it is useless to speculate. But the most important consideration is that she wants one kind of relationship and you want another. She might have a, a, a boyfriend that she didn't mention to him. You or really Omar. must choose to do what is best for you. All right, I'm glad that's over with, because this guy was nauseating me, this, this oh fellow, goodness. this character. Oh my, oh my goodness. All right, one more for the road, for, for a hell of a day. I apologize for the construction noise that you might hear. It's like the, I think it sounds like a, a power screwdriver of some kind. All right, well, well then we'll keep it light. Well, I mean, you you can keep it serious, but not well, long. Well, all of these but, light ones are serious. But not long, you know. Holy I mean, mackerel. It, it could be short and serious or, or medium-sized and serious. I am 58 years old. Oh, Christ. Twice divorced. Hard-working middle-class female. Oh, another candidate for the shillelagh. I spend most of my time working and involve children. About a year ago, I started dating someone. He is 63, very helpful, and claims he is madly in love with me, and appreciates this opportunity for a normal, wholesome life. Wholesome. Occasionally... Wholesome? Whole? Some? Get it? Whole? <laughs> occasionally... I'll catch him staring at women's butts. The butt was very succulent, well shaped. It bothers me a bit, but oh well, he's a man. What kind of butt does she have? Last week our family went camping. Maybe flat and full of cellulite? At least a dozen times I saw him position himself so that he could stare at my 40-year-old daughters behind. Position himself, huh? For her, her forty-year-old daughter. Here's Keep the, in mind, my daughter dresses very conservatively. But but she must have a snug. She must have very fitted clothes for her ass to 
for the shape of her ass to be showing. And this strip was almost all jeans and t-shirts. As we were packed up, ready to head home, she said she had to relieve herself and headed into the bushes. And he followed her. This is a remote campground. Instead of my boyfriend looking the other way, as we all did, he stared and got and, and, and she knew her direction. And she was looking at him. Obviously trying to sneak a peek. I am devastated and disgusted. Please give me your take on this. And here is Dear Abby's answer. That doesn't mean he's going to act on it, you know. Just, I don't know. What does she say? For a man to look at a woman's body is normal. But what your boyfriend did goes beyond that. Oh, the bath, uh, the bathroom thing. I mean, the, the bushes thing. For him to try to sneak a peek at your daughter while she was doing what she was doing indicates that he is a voyeur. Mm, a voyeur? Uh, he might be a voyeur, or he might be a voyeur that's fantasizing about something. Now you must determine whether he simply takes advantage of an opportunity or actively seeks it, which could present a problem in the future. I agree. I agree. Oh, you know what I heard? Uh, uh, either, either it was yesterday or today. It's Michelle Obama's uh, birthday also. So happy birthday, Michelle Obama. I never heard of I forgot. Yeah, I saw... I saw uh, a photo uh, today. It said, Happy birthday, Michelle Obama. So, it's, I don't know. So, happy birthday anyway. <laughs> Whether it is or ain't. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I think the woman is being, being, has been and still being picked on horribly. She's horribly. Referred to as a monkey. She's a very attractive uh, uh, older woman. By Republicans. She's a monkey. Well, don't they feel that way about all African Americans? Conservatives? Oh. Deep down? I guess so. They want to, you know, eliminate them from voting. They want to make them second class citizens again. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, they want to turn back the clock. Oh, certainly. To the days when you had no social services the poor or the elderly and uh, w uh, where you had slavery and you know and um, you had a uh, like a, a, a monarch a monarchy type of government where the rich owned everything controlled everything mm -hmm. and there was really no middle class they want to turn mm -hmm. back the clock yeah mm -hmm. they want to undo that everything that people fought for blood sweat and tears so well, anything that goes down yeah that, that benefits right those on the lower rungs of the economic ladder yeah the, yes. the women's right to vote the suffrage movement the civil rights movement in the early 60s the um, uh, uh, FDR with the Social Security um, the the unions Bain, Lyndon Baines Johnson the Medicare fir the first unions were born for a very a good reason. Good reason. Necessity. Reasons. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, but Republicans want to undo all of that. All of it. All of it. Go back to the days of the king and the serfs. Yes, when, where okay. you couldn't hunt for a for an animal, the deer in the king's forest. It was the king's deer. Everything was the Everything king's. Everything belonged to the king. Right. There you go. That's why you had uh, 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 Robin Hood and his Merry Men with Friar Talk, and that's why you had pirates, even though they demonized pirates. Our, our pirates yeah. are criminals. Yeah. There's cutthroats. Say they steal the. Hey, stealing from the a king's 
uh, stealing the stolen treasure that the king stole from uh, indigenous people is not stealing. The Bible does not condemn he who steals a loaf of bread because he's starving. Yeah, they were, okay. they were, they were the, um, like, uh, they were sort of like um, this guy in V for Vendetta, the, the character that he portrayed in England uh, fighting the, uh, the fat cats, the 1% at that time. You know, fight fighting for the little guy. Yeah. Except he uh, he went about it in uh, a very proactive way, should I say? Ooh. Kind of like what Charles Bronson did during Death. Oh, Wish. vigilante! There you go. Well, V for Vendetta. You know? uh -huh. All right, what do we got? We got time for one more. One, 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 All right, go. Let me see if I got something. Anything environmental or uh, an animals? Animals like. Let me see what I got here. Birds and the bees and the flowers ah. and the trees. Governor Christie is a wasting of our tax dollars. Oh boy, here we go. In his quixotic attempt to be. To be president is an insult to New Jersey taxpayers. The bill by Senator Loretta Weinberg, Ugh. Democrat of Teaneck, doesn't go far enough. Though it would disallow Christie's security expenses to be footed by taxpayers. It should also require the governor to repay security expenses already spent on his presidential bid. I only hope that the state legislature will pass this bill with the suggested amendment. That's it? That's it. Well, getting back to what I said earlier about Chris Christie, um, wanting to spend taxpayers' money to arrest people for smoking marijuana uh, and, and but not want to spend taxpayers' money to help the poor and the needy and our, and our veterans, because I haven't really heard his take on the veterans. If he's, since he's Republican, I have a feeling he doesn't want any social services whatsoever. You know, um, it's it's totally insane. The, the the priorities are screwed up. Screwed up. No kidding. But uh, on that note, thank you for joining us for this week's uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth. I forgot to announce the show. Believe it or not, and, and introduce us. You believe we, we? I had so much to say for Chisler's Hall of Shame. I forgot to say, welcome to Uncensored, Hard Hitting Truth. This is the first time I ever did this. I am your host, the birthday boy, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I am here with my uh, illustrious co host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, and we're coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. I usually say this at the very beginning, but I forgot because of all the, the information and all the uh, material we had to cover, and it was just a fast and furious busy day. So I forgot, well, what can I say? But Better late than never. How are you feeling this week, sir? <laughs> I think I did say that. Sleepy. No, I never I never did the... the, the yes, I said that we got no sleep last night. We made a clock because they Oh, okay. The no, I mean, when I do this, how are you feeling this week, sir? Oh, I mean, well. the whole the formalities I didn't do. Well, I got that out of the way. Anyway. All right. We'll see you. Have a, a, a safe, enjoyable weekend and, and the coming week. We're... We are being hit 
I think for the fourth week, mm -hmm. another heat wave of temperatures in the 90 degree Fahrenheit, high for the days, 90 degrees, in the uh, during the dog days of summer. <coughs> yeah, and uh, I would say this is week four of having 90 degree Fahrenheit, high well, temperatures. It, it fools us. It gives. It gives like 91 uh, one day, 89 the next day, but, you know. But you know what you could tell it's still bad? 90s. You know what you could tell it's bad? Some of the days we had this week, when I walked outside at 2 a.m. to throw some extra garbage out, first I look around and make sure there's no skunks and raccoons and coyotes or whatever, you know, I make sure the coast is clear. I walk outside. And it feels like a steam bath at 2 a.m. It feels Jungle. 90 degrees. Jungle. And it, yeah, but the humidity Jungle. is so intensely high. Mm -hmm. it, it, the temperature did not feel like it really dropped. No, it might be like 78, but the humidity is terrible. Yeah. And then when, when we had um, um, a thunderstorm, and, and it's been a very wet summer. Usually it's dry now. No, it doesn't relieve the situation it doesn't lower the humidity only one day the humidity went down what are you gonna do anyway take care but the temperature was still at 90. yeah it was still 90. that's like the people who say oh we'll go to arizona it's dry well it is dry. bullshit it's still 105. well that's what people that from out there tell me you know i mean a pizza oven is very dry too but yeah. you wouldn't want to like uh jump. i don't want to be in there you don't want to crawl in there yeah. You know, it's like uh, what the uh, the Empress of the Planet Vulcan said on Star Trek: "Zaveda is Zaveda. What, what can, can be you, done?" What the hell? It was she was a Jewish Vulcan. Yeah. yeah. Say so long to these jabronis, people. So long, jabrons. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.